Well good everyone and welcome back to another David Maxwell Golf video where today I have some new irons. So we're using the MLM2 Pro in conjunction with Awesome Golf to test out what are my new iron distances. And before I get to it, these bad boys are my new iron. That's right, the Callaway Apex Pro 21s. Now I have been using uh, the Rogue ST Pros and I've absolutely loved those irons. But just for me personally, I did find that I was starting to hit them a little bit too far. They were so hot off the face and I really did love those irons, but now I'm looking for a little bit more control. I feel like my golf game is getting into a better spot. My handicap's coming down. I'm starting to play more like the golf that I would hope to play. So my next step with that is to go into a bit more of a uh, workable and precise iron. I'm going to put it that way. So we definitely lose a bit of distance, but I feel like I gained some um, some added benefit with precision. So we're going to go into that. Now I'm not going to talk a whole lot in terms of the text and specs of the irons. They are a forged head. Um, they're a really great iron. I have a Nippon uh, Modus 120X stiff shaft in there with a Golf Pride grip and the irons have been out for a little while. So when the next iteration of these come out, I cannot wait to test those either because no doubt I'll be jumping into those. But right now, I've switched into these and I need to know my distances. So let's get into it. All right, so what you can do in Awesome Golf is you can go into club distances. You can choose six shots per club. You can choose three shots per club. You can really go into whatever you want. I'm just going to choose three shots per club because I'm going into every single club and I'm just going to pick three really good strikes and that's going to give me some great averages. Now I'm going to start with gap wedge, pitching wedge, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Four. I do have a three iron, but I'm not going to bother with that one. So the reason why I'm jumping into the gap wedge first is because I need to know my gap wedge distance compared to my pitching wedge distance. I've typically always had a big gap between gap wedge and pitching wedge, and then I've manufactured shots or laid up to distances to accommodate for that. But right now, this is just going to be a raw test. I need to find out the full distance of each swing from three really good swings of each club, I mean, and... Uh, Let's see how we do it. And let me tell you, if my swing speed is a little slow, I've just eaten a mountain of Indian butter chicken, and that was beautiful. But now I feel like I want to hibernate. Yep. Now if you see that I'm, I'm quite a way across this way, it's because I've lined up the MLM2 Pro to be further here, so when I hit a four iron, I'm not gonna be hitting that box. And if it looks like I'm hitting to the side of the screen, it's going down the middle, that's why. It's just the way that it's lined up. So let's get to it. Three shots with the gap wedge. Good start. Pretty much exactly what I would expect. 105 meters of carry, just under 10,000 spin. Cool. Left that one out there a little. Again, 105. That's fine. Boom, boom, boom. Don't know why I got that song in my head. A little bit pulley, but that will be fine. Still pretty good at 104. So I've literally gone 105, 105, 104, and that's gonna give you the average total distance, but that's fine. We're not worried about that. We want average carry distance. The next club is a pitching wedge. So I'm not gonna bore you guys with just running through and seeing me hit shot after shot after shot after shot, because that's gonna be boring for you. But I'm just gonna talk a little bit about why I've gone into um, the Apex Pros. Now, obviously uh, they're a couple of years old now, but that doesn't mean that these are still not a class A iron, and they definitely are. They're, they're a top tier iron, they're a beautiful looking iron. I mean, I don't think I've actually seen too many irons even now that look better than this. And you know, if you're looking for a new set of irons, I do understand that it's very expensive right now to buy irons. So if you're looking for something secondhand, you can pick one of these sets of irons up for around about 1200 bucks, Australian that is, um, sometimes even cheaper, and you have an amazing iron that potentially Nobody's actually used. And you're gonna save yourself a couple grand. Let's go into a pitching wedge. That was nice, that was really nice. Again, a draw is pretty much what you're gonna to see tonight because it's, that's just my number. It's my number, that's my shot shape. Uh, 123, yeah, again, that's where I expected. So they're not gonna be as far as what I have been hitting the ball. Like I said, they are a little weaker in loft, not necessarily as weak as your traditional lofts. 33 degrees for the seven iron. That was nice. 118, that one was a little shorter. I did flush the first one, so I'll leave that one in there because it is good to have an actual average distance rather than just always your very best. 
Okay, it's a little better. Spun up quite a bit too. 9,000, that's a lot of spin. That's good though. All right guys, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna have a quick break for a minute. I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna hit all of these irons, get all of the stats, and then run you through them all. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and jump into the approach section and see how the numbers we've got from these stats apply to the approach section and how close we can get to those pins using the club distances that we've used here in the app. So let's do that. All right, guys, so we have hit all of the shots in terms of everything from a gap wedge right through to a four iron. So I'm gonna take a look at the numbers. All right, so we've got the final results here. Now, this is gonna give you average total distance, okay? This is not gonna give you average carry here. You're gonna to need to go into the communities tab to be able to get that. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to go back. I'm going to go into the communities tab. This is gonna be reconnecting my stats, session stats, and it'll be this one here, eight clubs used. So I could download this from a CSV if I wanted to. Um, but basically what I wanna know is I wanna know my average carry. So my average carry on a gap wedge is 105 meters at the bottom there. Average carry on a pitching wedge is 120. So there's 15 meters of difference between a pitching wedge and a gap wedge. And then there's 13.7 meters difference uh, between the pitching wedge and the nine iron, which again, I always tend to have a gap there too. And then there's 10 meters. And then again, between an eight iron and a seven iron, there's gonna be another um, 16 meters, which is quite a lot. And then there's only seven meters between a seven iron and a six iron, although I didn't hit all of those six irons very well another 14 meters, and then another 13 meters. So what we can see there is even though I've got the new irons, even though I'm going through all of this, it is definitely worth it if you get new irons yourself to come and test this out because it may mean that you need to tweak your lofts, that you need to go in and just get them either strengthened or weakened to make sure that those gaps come a little tighter. Now 13 meters, I'm gonna say that on average, that's okay. Uh, I would like it a little bit tighter. I would like it at about 10 meters, but that can be an inconsistency in my swing. It can be me flipping at the bottom. It can be me over compressing a ball, all of those little things when you're getting new irons. So I'll persist with it for now, but let's jump into the approach section and see how this goes uh, with those distances on the approach range. So let's see, what was our 165 number? Let's, let's check that out. 166 was a six iron, okay. All right, so 166 meters was the six iron. We are now playing 165 with one meter down, so really 164. This should be pretty much landing on that number. Did not strike that well. So that will probably be short and running up. And that's fine. I didn't strike it well, but I'm on the green and I've still got a putt for birdie. I can take that. That again was heavy, but it will make the green. Maybe, stop, yep, okay. Like that. Okay, so I've hit a good one. What have we got here, have I hit it too good? Yeah, I did think that number for six iron was a little bit short, so I didn't hit them that well, okay. 170, that was smoked. Keep pulling them though. Mm -hmm. So 173, so I'm gonna say that my six iron actually is probably about that, you know, 170 to 171 sort of number. Um, as you can see there that 165 is probably too close. So it's always good to do that. It's always good to know your numbers. Let's jump into something that's a little more closer to home. What do we got? 143 with an eight iron, 159 with a seven. Well, I'll tell you what, let's go same pin, jump into the seven iron and see how this fares. This is what I call working it out. That was nice. It's got to turn back. Turn. 157, so again, that was pretty much bang on that number that we saw just before. Let's go a couple more and see if I can get one just a little more meterage out of it. One twenty-two. There we go. So one sixty-two. So if I want to, other than just a standard swing, I can push a couple of extra meters out of these irons rather than just some stock shots that we hit there in the club distances. I'll get one more. That was absolutely hammer. I can't hit a better seven on than that. And 
161 that's rolled out to 165 so I've just learned something there with the new irons obviously they have their stock carry distances but given the fact that I'm going to be hitting them into pins if I've got middle pins then I could probably go back down a club if I've got a back pin then I can go up a club and so on and so forth all right so my five iron number was 180 so I'm going to go to 183 meter pin it's playing two meters uphill which is 185 just to see how we fare with doing this That's pretty good. Sit down. Boom, bang on 183. Happy days. Now guys, if you're like me and you do have new clubs, make sure you spend the time with your MLM2 Pro or a launch monitor that you have and get to doing this. Get in and get your club distances, get in and hit some approach shots here where you can actually see and visualize in your mind hitting into a green and what's gonna happen when you're out on course. Because often, we'll see a yardage like 183 or whatever it is and you might think okay you have to hit that number and then you're either over the back or you're not quite hitting your clubs 100% because all of your distances have been off you know 100% pure strikes. I kind of encourage people that if you're flushing every single shot and you're basing your average off that it's not going to help you that much on course because let's face it we don't all flush every single shot when we're on course you're better off hitting three shots where you've got a good shot maybe a not so good shot and then a really good shot so that's going to give you the best average in my opinion and uh, as you can see we're getting closer to pins we're working it out as we go but we're getting closer to pins that's flushed like that's hit really well Yeah, maybe five irons my distance, 183, boom. And 180, so that 180 number there is exactly the same number that we had for the average carry distance, and I'll hit one more. See, I didn't quite get that one as well, so let's, oh no, maybe I did. Just didn't feel like, man, these are forgiving clubs. 183, so it actually took a little bit of spin off. I was gonna say that strike felt like it was a little bit more toward the toe, but I'm actually really impressed with these clubs. That was very nice. Cool. Now let's go an in between distance, right? So we can see my numbers 105 as this reconnects. I've got 105 meters on my gap wedge. I've got 120 on a pitching wedge. So if I go to a 115 meter pin, so if I'm going to a 115 meter pin, I either need to really boost a gap wedge or do what I prefer and knock down a pitching wedge. So I feel like it's easier for me to take five meters off a pitching wedge than to add five meters to a gap, or 10 meters to a gap wedge. As you saw, my average carry with a pitching wedge is 120. Let's work this out and see what the feel is to hit 115. That was not a good shot. That was a thin. But it could be a thin to win. Landed at 114, I didn't hit it that well, and I got away with it. If I had to hit a gap wedge like that, I'm gonna be short for sure. Let's go again though, because I don't wanna finish on that one. That wasn't very good. That felt nice. A much nicer strike, you can see the difference in launch. And we are bang on that number. If that happens on course, everyone is taking that shot. 100% of the time. But just to show you what happens if I hit a full shot, run 115 meter pin, if I hit a full pitching wedge, this should go sailing over the back. And 121, bang on that number again. Still actually a really good shot because I've only got a six meter putt back to that pin. But as you can see, I've gone long and I've gone over the back. So I encourage you guys that when you've got your MLM2 Pro, I know that a lot of you guys love the course play as I do as well, but if you actually want to use it to get better at golf and you've got some new irons, make sure that you take it out and that you spend the time to get to know these irons that you know, you know how much you can take off an iron, how much you can add to an iron, what's the max that this iron will actually give you an output, what's your miss strike? It all matters. All right guys, so last thing here tonight is I'm gonna go into shot shaping. Okay, so shot shaping with my new irons. Now how versatile are these little puppies? Because as good as they look, they still need to perform. I mean, the reason why I went from the Rogue ST Pros to this was because I wanted that playability, I wanted that workability, I wanted to feel like I can fade a ball if I'm trying to. Uh, with the Rogues, as much as I love them, it was very nice to draw a ball. It was very hard for me personally to fade a ball. I mean, I've been hitting draws all night anyway. So let's just try and hit a fade straight off the bat. That was good. That was very good. Look at that. 
Come on down. Okay, so six iron, 165, I will take that every day of the week. Now my fade is typically about that sort of five meters shorter. I don't know why, maybe I'm just not as confident to swing at the ball. Here we go. I think I'm on to something. 159, a little bit shorter though. All right, let's do one more of those normal cut fades and then we're gonna try some, some low ones and some hooky ones. Mm, don't know, does it go, oh, go, 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 go. I smoked it, but it's a little bit of a double cross, I think, but it's not so bad, 168. Okay, so we hit three fades in a row. Just to confirm that these are good shot shaping irons, I wanna now just try and quickly hit one draw, even though you see me hit them all night. Just wanna try and hit one draw straight away. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Now you can see that's probably gonna go further. Yeah, 173. My draw always goes further than my fade. Now, let's do a low cut fade. So if I'm, I'm thinking this one is something that I really wanna pierce under the trees and go around. I've got a six iron, so it's not designed to be going a million miles. It's just I've hit it right or left on a, or right on a par five, and uh, now I need to cut my way out of it. There we go. Beautiful low fade. Now see if we can go any lower than that. I do have a six iron, so if I'm wanting to hit that low punch stinger. There we go, that's even lower as well. So you can hit that low kind of a stinger shot. And then if we wanna get that real ropey dopey one, so that real slinging hook, I like to call it, let's, uh, you know, this is the one where you drop the right foot back. You're really trying to work it around a tree, around a corner. Oh yes. Yes, 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 yes. So, I mean, in terms of these irons, these are absolutely magnificent. And I know that the, the products get thrown at us like there's no tomorrow and we're like kids in a candy store and we're looking at every single new iron that comes out and we're like, wow, this has got to be the best. And wow, this has got to be the best. Let me tell you that these Apex Pro irons are absolutely still one of the best irons, especially for somebody like me. So low single digit handicaps, my handicap is three. You can hit the ball, you can strike the ball really well, but you want to be able to work the ball with a little bit of forgiveness. We're not plus handicap pros. We're not going to be on tour with the tour pros, but we do want something that has, for my preference anyway, a thin sole, a nice top line, not too thick, minimal offset. These do have a little bit of offset, but minimal offset and something that we can work. So guys, that is me for tonight. It is an absolute oven in here, and I'm not sure if it is the Indian butter chicken or not, but it is a cooking sauna in here right now. I can feel the weight just dripping off me with every second that goes by. So if you haven't already, make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel, comment a positive comment. If you've got any questions, throw them in the comment section. I do get back to every single comment in there. It's just my way of saying thanks to you guys as a YouTube community and my subscribers. I really do appreciate you all and I will see you on the next video. Cheers guys.